outside our window. And the birds are chirping all around in this happy little rural southern town. Hello and welcome to Rusty Water Towers, the podcast where we talk about faith and hope in rural life and ministry. I'm your host, Jonathan the Mastersmith, or Dr. J, because my name is 27 letters long. Today is actually the special road trip edition of the Rusty Water Towers podcast. I'm joined here by my wife, the Reverend Chandler Mastersmith, as we drive to visit family for Thanksgiving in very rural Alabama. If you've not uh, heard me talk about my wife, she is a deacon in Full Connection United Methodist Church. That means she is a pastor or a minister who has a specialized ministry and calling. She serves at First United Methodist Church of Newton of Newton in North Carolina, as well as serving as the conference youth ministry strategist, along with a lot of other hats she'll often wear in ministry through helping others, through engaging in relationships, art, and music. Yay! In a few minutes, we're going to take, we're going to, uh, take a chance to get to know her, and we're going to talk about rural life and ministry together. And uh, But first, each week we start off with a country music song that allows us to think about rural life and faith. This week is Jody Messina's probably most famous song, Heads Carolina, Tales California. This song is in the line of country leaving songs, of uh, the man who leaves or the woman who leaves, but this time they both leave together. The lyrics go, baby, why do you say we just get lost? Leave this one horse town like two rebels without a cause. I've got people in in Boston. Ain't your daddy still in Des Moines? We can pack up t- t- tomorrow, but tonight let's flip a coin. Heads Carolina tells California, somewhere greener, somewhere warmer. Up in the mountains, down by the ocean, where it don't matter. Long as we're going somewhere together, I've got a quarter. Heads tell Carolina, tails California. I think I said that to you last night. What did you say? <laughs> let's just get lost. Flip a coin. Yeah, flip a coin. Let's just get lost. <laughs> Uh, that's it's fun, yes. Yeah. So we, uh, we we actually and actually uh, one of the other lyrics goes into talk about we can go 400 miles before we have to stop for gas. I, I literally and, said that earlier. <laughs> yeah, when we fill up the car, we can go. We we it had 400 miles uh, in its range. There's a speed trap oh. ahead. Yeah, so the the car had 400 miles in its range left to uh, of gas once we filled it up. The song for me is about two people who have a strong relationship. But wherever they are, wherever they're at, may not be serving their relationship or helping their relationship, or maybe they're just ready for something new and different, but they're just open to whatever it is as long as they're together. I think it's a reality of rural values that some people make do on their known place, and some people can make do as long as they have their known person or people or community, whatever that looks like. What's your experience with this song? Love this just wherever we are we we find and create our own happiness um because it's more of like being together and part of who we are not necessarily where we are oh exactly i feel the same way i feel like we could and if you're listening and your employers uh we are not planning on doing this (laughs) but we could uh just pick up and go somewhere else if need be and just start start life anew there wherever that might be and still be together and do whatever we need to do yeah and we'd be perfectly fine because we have each other and our and our dogs yes we have each other and our four dogs and a cat now so she might she might become part of staying with the house though yeah she She might belong to the house we might leave does anybody want a cat (laughs) (laughs) yes um she'll bring you dead birds it, it's very real. It's very real. I'm sure that Shannon is slowly working on a song about the cat who brings yes. in, brings brings live birds into the Love, house yeah. and dead birds to the basement stairs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the the um, joys of cat ownership, where she's an indoor outdoor cat. Not used to it. No, Shannon did not grow up with cats. So uh, I grew up with cats. So it was, but they were barn cat situations more so. Now my parents have an indoor cat that they uh, that they care for deeply as their uh, favorite child. So, so as part of that. So, uh, in thinking about that, Shannon, tell us a little bit about yourself. I gave your intro, but tell us who you are, where you come from, what your experience has been in ministry. So I, um, gosh, that's a hard question to answer. Um, I grew up in the Southeast. Um, we moved all over the place because my dad was in the bread business. He started out loading bread trucks and worked his way up through to be a plant manager eventually 
Um, but we moved every time he changed um, positions. So I've lived in a variety of places. Um, and the one constant in all of the places was church. It was my home that kind of kept me centered and grounded when I didn't know how long we were gonna stay in a place. Um, and so church has just always been my second home and where I kind of found my sense of identity and grounding um, and also where I kind of found my sense of purpose or calling. Um, I was a really awkward middle school girl who had natural curly hair that I did not know how to deal with and I was overweight and I uh, got made fun of a lot and it was through church that I found um, a sense of love and, and acceptance from so if you're listening, we are still driving. So there, we're driving through random construction right now. So if you hear noises, it's the it's us driving through construction zones with various qualities of road and pavement. I was just trying to pause so maybe you could edit them out. But. Uh, no, I think it, we, we said it as the <laughs> oh, uh, road okay. trip special. So all right. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy all those bumps. It's it's uh, it's uh, part of the ASMR experience now. We'll label this <laughs> as an ASMR podcast. Are you familiar with those kind of podcasts where people people just make noises that maybe uh, stimulate? Uh, different parts of people's nervous systems to help them relax I've or never heard of that. Uh, increase arousal. It's a thing. It's a thing on um, <laughs> it's a thing on YouTube and podcasts where you just like listen to people make noise. Sometimes it's like chopping food. Sometimes it's like uh, someone mowing grass. Sometimes it's like That's so weird. Yeah, but there are some people who like I do not. I cannot. I do not want like just ambient noise. I like want to be that. able to see what's happening. Uh, well, sometimes there is watching it. Like you can watch oh. people cut food, but like a podcast obviously is audio. Uh, Okay. So, but no, so back to your life. We're no, that's okay. This is pretty much how we live our lives. Um, this is not a linear type uh, relationship. Yeah, this is not a linear podcast. You could start <laughs> it at any point and it makes sense. You'll just have to listen to it three times. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, that's life with Jonathan, you guys. Um, <laughs> we've, we've been together 18 years and it's never a dull moment. Uh, it has been an adventure of a lifetime and continues to be so every day. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, but it was uh, definitely through my awkward adolescence that I found a sense of, of belonging in the church and heard this message that God thought that I was beautiful. And so as I kind of went on with my life and explored what I was going to do um, for a living, there was this calling that was with me all along that was basically like, create this place for others to belong. Um, and curate this place of belonging and um, and love and acceptance and inclusion for people who may not not otherwise have that kind of place. So that's what I do. That is that is so so what she does uh, throughout this. Yes, we met when my, we met my first day of undergrad. I don't think she remembers actually meeting me, but within a couple months we had started holding hands of what we called were. We called our we called our relationship just being happy together yes. until it evolved into other things. So while I am the rural ministry person, Shannon tends to lean more into she has backgrounds in conflict resolution and youth ministry. So oftentimes when people are asking me questions about ministry that leads towards youth ministry, I will often say I can help you a little bit, but let me let me give you the information for someone who can help you quite a bit more. So Shannon works really closely with a lot of different people in our annual conference. She'll get calls all the time from people in urban churches, rural churches, white churches, black churches, all over. Just She has influenced young people uh, as part of that uh, because she's mostly served in rural churches in her ministry. Uh, she, uh, the current church she's serving in, I would consider a sort of a small town, still has a very rural vibe to it in many ways. Uh, and except uh, she, of course, served for three years in uh, Chicagoland in Northbrook. Yeah, and, and then what it really comes down to is relationships. So even in Chicago, um, in Northbrook, it, it was kind of the same approach of um, different contexts and different culture, but the same approach of building relationships. Um, and not just a one-on-one -on -one type relationships. I think sometimes relational youth ministry um, means a one-on-one -on -one type relationship, but what I do is more of uh, creating a community of belonging. Um, so it's a relationship that invites um, participation in such a way that others will also participate and be part of the community. So it's really co-creating the community 
the community that we all crave, which is a sense of belonging and acceptance for who we are. And with youth, you know, as they're exploring who they are, it changes day to day. And so that's the fun part of youth ministry is that somebody might act one way one day and, and a completely different way the next as they are trying on different identities. And so it really takes youth ownership in creating that community so that it can ebb and flow and be more of a, of a fluid um, experience that has the same values embedded in all of it, which is come as you are and there's a place here for you. Well, yes, thank you. That I mean, that seems like such just the heart of what this ministry in general should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It doesn't have to be focused on programs or, uh, or, uh, or even just uh, events during the week sort of situations. Whether you can, whether if you're just the pastor of a church, and it's just the worship experience. It's about just that sense of being welcome to be in the space. Yes. Thanks, Shannon, for sharing so much about yourself and your ministry. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back and talk more about the creative aspects of your life and ministry, including some of the music you've written, like our theme song Hildebrand. So we'll be back after this. Oh. Hi there, Jonathan here, and I'm recording this ad to tell you about a resource from the Hinton Rural Life Center. My wife, Shannon, and I have partnered with Hinton to create the Theotokos Connections Confirmation Curriculum for small rural churches. We designed this curriculum with rural youth programs in mind, where you really want to connect their teenagers with the culture, heritage, and place on top of the faith you're trying to instill through the confirmation program. There are six sessions that focus on topics like connecting to self, God, history, church, place, and creation. Each unit has either a Bible story, like the story of Mary or the story of Samuel, or a historical figure like Richard Allen or Harriet Tubman to engage with as part of the experience. But this experience is not just a sit and listen and do a paperwork kind of confirmation. It's an active and connective confirmation program. You might be headed to a museum, helping prepare for a church spaghetti supper learning new prayer practices, assisting in worship, or volunteering at the local mission agency. It is designed with rural culture and rural life in mind. You can do this in six weeks, six months, and you can do them in most any order or form you want to engage. And I'll tell you, I, I'm pretty sure it's not just youth programs using this curriculum. I've seen other people get it for their college ministries, as well as perhaps using it as adult confirmation or adult refresher on Methodist and rural culture and life. And you know, if you have other trusted confirmation curriculum you want to pair it with, go ahead. This is a very customizable program, so if you want to bring other lessons from a different program you've used or things you've written yourself, feel free to blend them in. This is also a very affordable program, and you pay per student, not for a lump sum curriculum that you may not use all the pieces of, or you may not use but once every two or three years. And this is designed to make it affordable and accessible for you. And it pairs well with Hinton's Theotokos confirmation retreats that happen in the spring. For more information on the curriculum or to place an order, check out hintoncenter.org slash theotokos or hintontheotokos.org for more information. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome back. So Shannon, one of the comments I regularly get from people is that they love the theme song uh, for the podcast and it's all of my little breaks and everything are just pieces of the song throughout it so uh, if and since I c continuously remind people that you wrote this song I'd love for you to share some of your inspiration behind it I mean I know some of the inspiration but I'd love to hear why you chose to write this song sure so I started writing music when I was in middle school um, partially to kind of cope with being an adolescent and and just the awkwardness of all of it. It was a way of expressing emotion. And so I, I've written songs here and there about all kinds of different things, but it was mostly like instrumental until we moved to Hildebrand. And somehow um, the stars aligned and I just felt really inspired by everything around us in Hildebrand that I just started writing out um, the song and the lyrics all together. It just kind of came out like, as a, as a song and so we live in Hildebrand and I would just notice these little things like all of the dead trees in the yard 
or uh, whenever we cut the dead trees down, like they were just stumps in the ground in this great big yard across from the fire station. And like, as I thought about that, like it kind of came out as a lyric to a song. And so that's mm. one of the lyrics of the song is, um, many of the trees are dead, they're just stumps in the ground in a great big yard across from the fire station. And it, I think that's part of the rural life that I love so much is the simplicity and the beauty of what you see. Um, many people, when they think about rural life, they think about there's nothing there. Yes. There's like there's no attraction, right? Like it's not like a big city. Oh yeah, I regularly get when people yeah. whenever people uh, ask me why I do rural ministry. There's nothing there. Yeah, like there's not any big buildings or whatever. But like, but there's dead trees and stumps in the ground. And lime green lights. And oh, and that was the other thing. Like there's this lime, this bright lime green light that shines outside our window. And so I'm thinking about this, you know, sensing this romanticism of where we live and the, just the beautiful simplicity of it. It just all came together as a song, kind of as a prayer, really, of gratitude Ooh. for this place that we, that we call home. And, and so I, I think it was a part of life. I have these sometimes where I can't sleep. And so I get up in the middle of the night or... Um, this was, a, I think, a season where I was getting up early in the morning and I would hear the rooster crow. I would see the sun rise up through the trees. And so that that's another line in the song. So I'm sitting there kind of mad that I can't sleep. I'm drinking coffee or tea and I'm watching the light come in through the trees. And there's no place I'd rather be in that moment. How beautiful is it to see the light come in and a new day begin and so like the song just kind of came together as I was sensing gratitude for just the place that we live and that we call home and I mean the, the other parts of it of course it's like the rooster the crows in the morning but the dogs the dogs all bark at each other there's so many dogs in our community and they all just seem to know when to talk to each other and so all the neighbor dogs talk to each other and the cows because we get we take Rosie to go visit the cows nearby um, and so again it's like the animals are part of the place and so it's not that there's nothing there like animals are very much part of rural life and so all of the things in the song are the, the ho hope is in the possibility of what can be and again with with youth or even in rural areas it's my, my passion is bringing people together to work towards that potential future together and co-creating that imagining what it could be it's so real and uh, if you ever have the opportunity to, to meet and work with her and i'll put her contact information in the show notes uh she is a great to work with and help people imagine and discern what the youth ministry could be alongside of the youth she encourages whenever you do discernment process, don't leave the youth out of the conversation, right. especially it's about the youth. Right. But one fun thing about the country music stuff is we actually kind of communicated through Dolly Parton list of lyrics in AOL Instant Messenger away messages uh, back in the dark ages of the internet uh, when we were in college. Yep, uh, that's how he told me that he loved me through a Dolly Parton lyric. And then the first time I vocalized it to her, Alison Krauss was on the television. <laughs> so country music women are very close to our relationship. Yes, yes as part of that very rural in our in our lifestyles since we're on the road i just want to talk about driving through rural places i am generally not allowed to drive when we're on road trips like this <laughs> for various reasons including i just want to drive the i pick avoid highways lots of times on my gps and add an extra two hours to our route yeah but shannon does not necessarily want to do that no she's okay with little detours but not two hour detours right we took a 20 minute longer route this time and that that was beautiful was totally worth it because it's through the mountains instead of gastonia i mean duh but so I'm, not everybody knows where Gastonia is, but it's a uh, a town outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a suburb to Charlotte, but it feels like it's more congested than Charlotte is. Yeah, it's not fun to go through, and the traffic is awful. But we got to drive through the mountains instead, and it was beautiful. Totally worth the extra 20 minutes, but I'm not into two-hour detours usually. It's a, it, But yeah, the, the rural drives are a lot of fun because we ended up like driving through the mountains and seeing the... That. And actually, on one of our anniversaries, we decided to take Highway 9 from 
Montreat, North Carolina, all the way to North Myrtle Beach, and that was quite a rural adventure. Yeah, it took us about four hours longer than it would have otherwise. It, yes, it should have. It was beautiful. We started out <laughs> up in the mountains. We got we drove down through um, the Blue Ridge and uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina. If you've ever been there, highly. If you've not been there, we highly recommend it. Then from there, we went down to Lake Lure. If you've ever seen Dirty Dancing, it's uh, that is where they filmed Dirty Dancing. It takes place in the Catskill Mountains, but they filmed it in Rutherford County, North Carolina, at Lake Lure. And then from there, Highway 9 started to get a little more boring as we got out of the mountains. I was oh. so ready to get to the beach. Oh, so, so, but the one is when we stopped in Chester, and I being, I was in charge of driving at that point, I don't know, remember why, uh, but uh, we decided to, I decided I want to stop and take a picture of this really pretty church, because I also teach church history, and, and those sort of things, it's a pretty little Methodist church in downtown Chester, and, um, I pull off what we were driving at the time, which was a 2003 Mercury Grand Marquis white whale of a car, and uh, get out and proceed to get the car stuck in the mud and cannot get it out. I am out pushing while she is trying to reverse and forward, and eventually people stop to help because rural small town people will pull over and help. Uh, I don't know, I may have told a story like this on another episode, but they will pull over and help. But the reality is the cops pulled over and were trying to help and they were going to call their car that was designed for this. But before they could, just a nice guy and an old beat up pickup truck pulled over, jumped out of his car onto the ground, hooked a chain up to my car and to his truck, pulled us right out. Wouldn't take any money. Hey everybody, Jonathan here. I just wanted to clip myself back in and say that for some reason, the microphone was giving us problems in the car. And uh, while I was able to edit together a mostly stable podcast, I do want to say that if it sounds a little wonky in places, it was because of the microphone and me having to edit together bits and pieces of things. However, one thing that gets cut out almost completely is Shannon's recommendations. As you remember, I asked people to recommend things for this and while she recommends the board game arena she also recommends the book three big questions that change every teenager making the most out of your conversations and connections by kara powell and brad m griffin i'll put this in our virtual bookshelf and uh yeah i think that's it now back to us uh oftentimes especially during the pandemic shannon got really into playing online games but not like online games like uh immersive multiplayer online role-playing games uh, like World of Warcraft, playing board games. Board games, I love board games so much. And what I love about the Board Game Arena um, That's is, the website she uses mostly. It's boardgamearena.com, is that you um, connect four with somebody in Australia, you know, all over the world. Thanks so much, Shannon, for being here. How can people yeah. reach out to you? Um, I do have a website, it's deaconshannon.org. Um, or you can email me at deaconshannon324 at gmail.com or just see Jonathan and he'll point you to me. Exactly, exactly. He I'll knows look, where I live. I do, I do. Look for five water towers and find, <laughs> find a house around them and knock on doors until you find us. Well, thanks so much, Shannon. And uh, I'm gonna close out the podcast now. You can listen to Rusty Water Towers wherever you get podcasts. If you have questions, suggestions for guest topics, or just want to say hi, you can reach us out to us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, or you can email us at rustywatertowers at gmail.com. Special thanks to you, Shannon, for our theme music, Hildebrand. I record and produce this podcast because my hope is that it lifts up the hope and faith of rural life. Thanks for listening. Across the railroad tracks in the little lighthouse, let you pass if you weren't trying to find me. Many of the trees are dead, there's stumps in the ground in a great big yard across from the fire station. Oh.